And uh, my most recent scan, there were no measurable tumors. Lisa, how did you find carnivore? Well, my carnivore story starts actually with a good friend of mine and someone who you've actually had on your show as well. His name is Anthony Hayduck. And um, I met Anthony through a GIST support group. So Anthony and, Anthony and I um, have been diagnosed with the same disease, GIST. Um, so I am part of a Facebook group for GIST, GISTers. And I had been following Anthony for quite some time and following his journey and seeing that he had had some good success with some natural remedies. And I have always been kind of a homeopathic, natural type person. Um, so I reached out to him just to get a little bit more information about what he had been doing to find success. And he shared with me some of his strategies. And one of those was the carnivore diet. And um, at that point in time, I was working with an Ayurvedic practitioner. And in Ayurveda, um, it's a natural approach to medicine, um, but there's not a whole lot of meat usually in the Ayurvedic diet. And I was leaning toward um, a mostly plant-based diet at that time. Um, and Anthony would kind of tease me about my plant-based diet and um, encourage me to go carnivore. Um, but at that time, I felt like car uh, that plant-based was the best diet for me. So I was plant-based for probably a year and a half to two years um, until um, this past July. Um, this past July, I was having a lot of issues with bloating and swelling and um, a lot of pain in my abdomen. And it finally sent me to the emergency room. Um, in the emergency room, I actually was admitted to the hospital and I had a five day stay. Um, they had to extract about a liter and a half of fluid out of my abdomen. Um, I had to have five blood transfusions because my hemoglobin was so low. Um, and at that point in time, I downloaded Sean Baker's book and listened to the carnivore diet. And um, after being forced to eat the terrible hospital food, I made that decision then and there that as soon as I was released from the hospital, I would start a carnivore diet. So I was released on July 10, and I've been carnivore ever since. And November 10th will be my four-month carnivore-sary. Oh, wow, very nice. So um, for for people who may not have seen Anthony's interview, um, could you just explain just a little bit so um, that everyone's kind of on the same page? Yes, definitely. So uh, GIST is gastrointestinal stromo tumor. That's what GIST stands for. And it appears in different ways in different um, people. Anthony and I, although we share the same disease, we both have different mutations. I have the most common mutation, which is called, you know, the exon 11. Um, and it's the most common and most easily treatable is what they say. Um, Anthony has the wild type, which a wild type um, can be very difficult to treat. And none of the um, traditional medicines worked for him. And that's why he went carnivore. Um, Anthony, I think he has some primary tumors in his liver. I, uh, my primary tumor was located in my peritoneum, in the stomach lining, in the, in the flesh that holds all of your organs in is, is where mine is located. Um, that being so, it's inoperable. What kind of changes have you noticed in, in the four months? Uh, anything related to the gist or and, and anything else? Yeah, in, in four months, I've noticed a lot. Um, first of all, most importantly is when I was in the hospital, um, my my swelling and edema was so bad that I couldn't even stand or walk for like two hours. Um, my legs would be swelling so bad. And in the hospital, I lost a lot of weight. Um, when I got out of the hospital, I was about 107 pounds. Um, so I know most people, yeah, I'm 5'2", so I'm a little frame anyway, but 107 pounds was didn't look very good on me. Um, yeah, so most people go on the carnivore diet because they want to lose weight. Um, I actually went on the carnivore diet because I wanted to gain weight and gain muscle. Um, so as I was eating every two to three hours, um, just beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, 
and I started um, moving my body and then started weightlifting. Um, when I weighed myself yesterday, I was 126 pounds, so I've gained almost 20 pounds, and um, 11 of those pounds are muscle. So I have a fancy scale that can measure my muscle mass. So my muscle mass has increased drastically. My weight has increased it now. I'm at a healthy level. My eyesight has improved. Um, I think that's all I can think about right now. Um, and ha have you spoken to any of your doctors about this? And have you had feedback from them? Yeah, so actually, um, so my last scan that I had was just this past month. And um, actually, um, Anthony, and I, Anthony and I have gone into um, some fast some rounds of fasting right before of our, our scans. So we've included fasting into our carnivore regimen. And um, my most recent scan, there were no measurable tumors, um, just some disease tissue in my, in my abdomen and my peritoneum, like I mentioned before. So not having any measurable tumors is, is huge for me. Um, and my doctor has been great. Um, she supports me in what I'm doing. Um, when I tell her that I was 72 hours fasted before my most recent scan, she just kind of shook her head and said, well, I could never do that. But I figure, you know, when you're in a situation where it could be life or death, you just do what you have to do to make sure that you stay healthy. Um, I told her that I'm eating just a carnivore diet and she, she said, well, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, I hadn't seen her personally since um, before I was in the hospital. I was in the hospital in, in my hometown and where my oncologist, her office is about three hours away. So she had only heard from the emergency room doctors about the state that I was in. And right when I walked in the door and she saw me, she said, wow, I didn't expect you to look like this. You know, hearing what the doctor said, what in bad shape you were in, um, how well and how quickly you have bounced back. So I was pretty excited about that. Wow. So just, just to clarify, you mentioned your tumor was inoperable, but that the tumor has gone as far as i know yes um the last couple scans that i've had oh. i've had a ct and an mri and they don't they don't indicate any measurable type tumor of course my doctors won't say your tumor is gone um, but when you read the mri um, when I was first diagnosed, my tumor was about 7.7 .7 centimeters, and then it went down to 4.6, and then it went down to 2.2. And now, at, when I, you read my scans, there is no measurable, uh, no measurable tumor at, at all in the scan. Wow, that's awesome! And and now you're you're regaining weight, you're building muscle. I mean, you must be feeling awesome. Yeah, I feel awesome. I'm working out four to five days a week. I take, you know, three to four mile walks a few times a week. Um, my pain is like a zero to a one. I have very little pain. Um, and of course, that's all you want in life, right, is just to be able to feel good and to be pain free. Um, I get to go to work every day. I'm a second grade teacher and I love my job. So I am just so thrilled that this, this way that I'm living right now is giving me the opportunity to live life to its fullest. I just actually got back from the Bahamas. I went to a wedding um, with my sister and I got to explore the Bahamas. And it's just, I'm so grateful that I'm feeling so well to do so many wonderful things. At this stage, how day to day, how are you eating? Yeah. So um, day to day, I try to do um, some intermittent fasting. So I'm usually fasting 16 to 18 hours every single day. My first meal will usually be either noon or three o'clock. Um, I am taking a low dose chemotherapy pill right now. Um, against my doc, my doctor's knowing, I, I'm taking it every other day. Um, I'm only taking it on my longer fasted days. Um, there is some research on the effectiveness of chemotherapy. It, it, it's increased while you're fasted. Um, so I'm taking it every other day on my longer fasts. And I'm also taking it every day on my 72 hour fasting rounds. Um, I've done two 72 hour fasting rounds so far, and I'm planning on doing those um, twice a month. Um, just depending, I need to work out a schedule depending on my cycle for women. Um, 
where they fast, um, aligning with their hormones is very important. So I'm just kind of playing around with it now, but I plan on getting into a good schedule. So normally I break my fast uh, with bacon and eggs. That's really my favorite meal. Um, so in the morning I'll have, or at noon or three, whenever I break my fast, I'll have bacon or eggs. And then my next meal is usually some type of ground beef. Um, sometimes I will put a little bit of like taco seasoning on it or Greek yogurt. Um, sometimes some grass fed cheddar. So I don't, I'm not super strict carnivore, um, but I am mainly I'm sticking to a carnivore diet. And, um, and then dinner, um, I try to get as many varieties of meat into my body for dinner. My husband is not carnivore. So whatever we're having for dinner, I usually just make him a carb to go with. Um, but we'll have, you know, salmon. I love filet mignon. I know a lot of, a lot of, um, carnivores love their ribeye, um, but I'm a filet mignon girl, so I will eat a six or eight ounce filet. Um, I will eat a lot of shrimp, and I've started adding a lot of organ meats. Actually, I have been since the get already um, adding organ meats into my diet. Um, I started off when I first started carnivore eating a lot of cow liver and bone marrow, and I've now introduced some chicken liver, some bovine heart. Um, some oysters. Uh, I just try to get a variety of meats into my diet since they all have such a different um, nutrient profile in them. And then anything that I can't get from my local butcher, I will supplement. So I supplement with spleen and thyroid and some, some other organ meats. What kind of reaction do you get at school when you're eating bacon and eggs for lunch? Do, do, you, t do you actually take it with you? Of course. Yeah. Yep. Today, um, today I broke my fast. Um, after my kids already had eaten lunch and um, we were just doing a writing assignment. So I was walking around with my um, Pyrex dish of uh, bacon. Actually, I had sausage today, sausage and eggs today. Um, my local store was out of the sugar-free, nitrate-free bacon. So I opted for the sausage this week. Um, but I was just walking around eating my um, sausage. Um, actually, one of my students a couple of weeks ago um, she mentioned that her dad is on a carnivore diet, that he has, I think, eczema really bad and nothing was working. So he started a carnivore diet and it was one of the only things that would relieve his eczema. So her and I, just as an eight-year-old, you know, her and I had a little chat about the carnivore diet and how healthy it is for your body and how nutritious it is. Um, it's kind of funny because my students from my previous year will come in and visit me and they know that last year I was eating salads, fruits, smoothies, organic juices, and I was not even touching meat. And then they come into my classroom now and they see me eating all of this meat. And um, I, I think it's kind of funny. Um, but all of my kids know also that I don't eat any sweets. Um, so on birthday days, they'll bring their birthday treats to share. And they know that I don't take one because I never eat any of the sweets. And they know that about me. I tell them if they want to ever buy me a gift, don't bring me a cookie, don't bring me a donut. Just bring me some coffee and I'll be happy. <laughs> That's cute. Um, so how do you go with um, working with so many kids who are always probably well, likely always coming in with colds and flus and stuff like that? Yes, of course, especially at the beginning of the school year, a lot of kids are getting sick because there's so many germs just flying around. Um, I, I don't do a whole lot. Um, I keep my classroom clean. I use organic cleaners and essential oils to keep my classroom clean. Um, but I have a great immune system, even though my doctors tell me that I'm immune compromised uh, because of my disease. I don't get sick. I don't even get the sniffles. Um, I stay really healthy. I'd like to borrow that because it's, uh, I've caught something from my daughter in the last couple of days. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um when you first decided okay well i'm gonna go carnivore what was your husband's reaction my husband knows that um i will try anything for my health and so he probably just raised his eyebrows at me a little bit or maybe just a little shake of the head and um you know he kind of just knows oh just lisa's gonna do what lisa's gonna do and 
Um, you know, like I said, I will try anything. I've, I've tried um, RSO. I've tried, like I said, the Ayurveda and ginger and turmeric. And um, I've tried a lot of different natural um, things. But right now, my body is just liking the carnivore. I'm not doing anything else. It's it's so nice when you get to this point where it feels like your body just works the way it's meant to, or your body's just kind of everything's. It, it's like it's now a well oiled machine. It's not like it's not like you're always struggling to get things right. I've really noticed that over the past couple of days. As I mentioned, I just spent a few days in the Bahamas. I was there. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I was there for a wedding. So of course, there were lots of wonderful <laughs> meals to be eaten and drinks to be drank. And those are things I don't normally partake in. Um, I did stay as carnivore as I possibly could. Um, but I did have a little bit of drinks now and then. And um, my body, of course, you know, my hands, my joints started to feel a little bit more stiff and more swollen. My abdomen got more swollen. And so now I'm still trying to kind of cleanse my body of that and um, just get back to regular. But I can definitely feel when I have a little cheat. Um, it, it definitely takes its toll on my body. I'm actually looking forward to my next fast. I'll start my next fast actually this weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. And I'm looking forward to it because I know how good I'm going to feel afterwards. All of this is quite empowering, right? Because when, especially when you get a like this bad diagnosis like you had, you know, you feel like your power gets taken away from you, right? And then when you, you're now at the point where you can eat a certain way and fast a certain way that you can control the feeling of your body. It's, it's pretty good, right? It's incredible. And um, just to kind of go along with that, I used to get, you know, scanxiety. I used to be so nervous when I would have my scans or have my appointments with my doctors or what are they going to say? And I was so fearful all the time. And now I feel so good that I don't even care what they say. It doesn't even matter. Like I almost go into these appointments just like laughing because I don't, I don't care what the scan says. I don't care what the doctor says. I know because of the way I feel that I'm on the right path and that's all that matters to me. The kids uh the kids have got used to it. The kids are okay with you um eating your your carnivore uh during the day. Your husband's kind of just okay, we'll do do whatever you need to do. <laughs> what what about other friends around you? Yeah, definitely. I just wanted to re mention the kids again really quickly, just because, of course, I mentioned the hospital food is just so terrible, and we know that that's a huge problem. Um, but, of course, our school lunches are absolutely terrible. And um, so I, you know, try to just put my little two cents in now and then. And when we have the menu in front of us, we know what our choices are for that day. Usually they have two or three choices. Um, I always give them a lot of compliments when they choose the protein choice. So I'll say, look, you chose this instead of, you know, the mozzarella sticks or, you know, whatever, whatever choice that they were given. If they're making a protein choice, I always recognize that and kind of give them props and let them know that they're going to feel so much better today when they choose the protein choice as if, you know, having the cereal for breakfast or things like that, the carbohydrate choice, it's going to make them feel slow and sluggish um, by the end of the day. Um, and if, uh, with my friends and some other family members, it's kind of the same thing. This, you know, Lisa being a little out there, you know, a little extreme is nothing new. So um, everybody just kind of rolls with it. Um, but the interesting thing for me is sometimes the people just say, I could never do that. And for me, there is not a single thing that you can put in front of me that I would say I would never do that. If I think that it could help me and benefit my body, I'm always willing to give it a try. So when they say I could never do that, I just shrug my shoulders and say, okay, you know, this, this is what I'm doing and this is how I feel. And it doesn't matter to me what they think or they feel, but overall, everybody supports me. So at this stage, is this the future for you? You can see yourself being carnivore and, and doing the rolling fasts going forward? 
Yeah, definitely for for the near future. That is my plan is to stay with carnivore, to stay with the rolling fasts, to do intermittent fasting every day and 72 hour fasts every other week. Um, for lifelong, I'm not sure. I would love to get some more genetic testing done. And I know that every body thrives on you know different things depending on their genes. And is this something my body's going to thrive on for the rest of my life? I don't know. I thought I was thriving on a plant-based diet until I was declining, 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 which I didn't realize I was declining until I really hit a wall and I was in some big trouble. Um, so I think I just need to be able to listen to my body. And um, like I said, maybe get some genetic testing done, maybe start introducing some foods. Of course, I do follow Paul Saladino. And I know that he's starting to introduce some fruits and vegetables back in. Um, I think the most important thing is how do you feel? And right now, this is how I feel the best. Um, but I'm always going to be open minded and always going to be, you know, open to experimenting in the future. One of your friends said, OK, I want to give this a go. I, I'm skeptical that this could work for me, but I'll give it a try for maybe 90 days. What advice would you give them for getting started? For sure. Um, of course, first, I'm going to share with them my Pinterest board. I love to cook. I've always loved to cook. I've always loved to make food that is nutritious and healthy. Um, but I want it to taste good. And I want it to look good. Um, that's always been a passion of mine. So the first thing I'm going to do is share my Pinterest board. And and then um, I will say, you know, let me know how I can support you or I'll make a meal for them and say, you like, you like to eat this. Let me make this meal for you so you can try it. And there's even some meals that I've made for my husband that are full carnivore. And he's like, okay, wow, this is pretty good. You know, I've made some carnivore lasagna and it's pretty darn tasty. Um, so I would encourage them that, um, you know, even though if you're strict carnivore, if you are healing from disease, you do want to stick to the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Um, but if you're doing it for other, you know, other reasons and or you just want to lose weight, you can be very experimental with the things that you try. You can still make really good choices. You can still keep your carbohydrates really, really low, which is so important for your healing. Um, and of course, yeah, I would encourage them to try the whole time, to try everything, and I would be there to support them the whole time. Very nice. Um, so, Lisa, how can people reach out to you? Do you have uh, social media? You mentioned Pinterest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, my um, I would share my Pinterest with somebody who, if they wanted to reach out to me, I would say the best place to reach out to me would be my Instagram. My Instagram is Christ and Carnivore. Um, those are the two things that um, I think saved me when I got out of the hospital. Um, not only did I adopt a full carnivore diet, um, but I really recommitted myself to God. And um, now every morning I start first thing in the morning with Bible and devotions. And then I go right to um, my workouts and I get a good sweat in. Um, and then I, you know, like I said, I break my fast at about noon. Um, so those are the two things that I implemented when I got out of the hospital and really turned my life around. So um, Christ in Carnivore is my Instagram. You can also find me on TikTok under Christ in Carnivore. And I just created a YouTube channel, the same name, Christ in Carnivore. Right now, there's no content on there, but I do expect that to change really, really soon. Um, actually, Anthony and I are planning to work together, and we just want to get out the word of carnivore, uh, metabolic health, um, and and just share with as many people as possible. That is our plan. That's awesome. I'll, uh, I'll link to all your socials below. Okay. Lisa, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Dave.